All right, YouTube, I feel the need to post a really quick update on um, final thought to the Ford ZF e-brake uh, video. Um, so what I found is I was about to lead everybody astray. 95% of what's in that video is correct, but when I uh, put this together following my own advice, basically, um, I found that there was a, a squeak and, a, and it was very tight on this uh and what I found what it was tight on was this lower seal. Um, so based on what I was recommending people do, uh, using that lip right there to, to press the seal, and that is not going to work because there there's always going to be a ton of pressure right there, and that's exactly why I had all this friction. So the, the seal needs to be pressed further in, and that's why if you look at the Ford procedure, um, it's very clear uh, that the, the seal needs to be put in first. And so the only way to do that, it, it took me another day and a half to, to wrap my head around how, how this works. And maybe that's a perfect example of why I shouldn't be doing this job. And if, if you have the same difficulty I did, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be doing this job either. But you have to consider that. So basically, uh, the way this, this really needs to go together is uh, I got all my parts here. Uh, so that's upside down. And <clears throat> so the, the assembly of this is going to be... Um, you put your bearing in here first, and this is so stupid because it's just like a, a trailer bearing. You, you put your bearing in first, and then you put your seal in, and then you slide your shaft in ahead of that. So it's not it's not rocket science. I don't know why I found this to be so difficult, but basically, um, yeah, you, you put your bearing in, you put your seal in, you use a seal driver or a uh, uh, or socket or whatever you want, or you just tap it in and you get it it's not tight on uh, this upper surface here it'll slide right past that you got a, a deeper groove in there but you can see it uh, the, the seal wants the seat right in there which is right off the bearing where it's supposed to be so if you drive that all the way in uh, your bearing is just gonna sit in there um, you know you pro prop this up on a couple pieces I feel this is the best bet for me um, and then slide that in behind now what I've been doing to aid in I, like I said I've taken this bearing on and off a few times what I've been doing to aid that process at least for putting it on is this whole assembly will go in the freezer for about an hour hour and a half and then the bearing itself will go in the toaster oven or an oven or whatever I try not to go past uh, 200 250 degrees um, so that helps out a lot in, in letting this, uh, you know, you'll have to use the puller to get it on and off. Um, but when you have that temperature differential, this thing will slide right on. And it's really amazing how that works. Um, so that's a pretty common trick. So that's about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, that's, oh, so that's going to be, you're going you're gonna to turn this upside down. Drop it in there after your seal and bearing is in. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it sit for, uh, you know, I'm going to give it a quick tap to make sure that the, the bearing is seated all the way down. And then I'm going to let it sit for about a half hour because I don't need the, uh, the temperature differential anymore. Once I turn this whole assembly back over, oh, and I didn't talk about this. So what I found is I'm trying, I was trying to figure out the order of operations. And I said, all right, so once that is in there, poking out the top, what has to go in? And the answer is this, you know, your um, uh, speedometer gear. So this would not fit past the race. The, the race got in the way. And the, the Ford uh, procedure also indicates you put that race in after the fact. So I had to tap that race back out. So the procedure is, this is upside down, bearing goes in, seal goes in. That comes out of the freezer, that slides in through the opposite way. Let it let it uh, warm up to room temperature so that bearing is in its final position when you turn it over. And then at that point, you can slide your, um, your speedometer gear on. After the speedometer gear is on, then you can get your spacers on. I talked about how to get the, the spacing just right and, and do your uh, uh, indicator measurements. So that's all, all completely accurate. Uh, then you, you get those on, and then you assemble the rest of this. The, uh, I guess next is you, you tap your race in, and then you tap your bearing on top of the race, and then this goes on top of that. Seal side goes down over the shaft. 
Um, then your nut goes on. Well, I guess this goes on first. Nut on top of that. I torque that to 215 foot-pounds. You can check your end play again if you want. Um, so that's what I'm about to follow. Um, I also found that if you want to pull this thing off, a really tiny puller will work. I had to grind the uh, ears off of those um, off of those edges there, and I was able to use a brass punch or any kind of any kind of rod will work there. If you if you want to pull that off uh, while it's on the transmission or whatever you want to do. Um, oh, and one last thing on this, uh, the the final part I'm I'm waiting for. I had taken this on and off a few times, and um, if you look right there. I had broken that with my fingernail. I had the lightest pressure on it, and this plastic is so old and brittle that it just cracked right off. So uh, th that's an extra part. You know, I talked about needing your your spacers and the shim kit and the and the new nut and and all the other things that are beyond the uh, the kit to rebuild this. And I would just add that right in because Allstate gear carries that part. And you're gonna need it because yours is gonna be just as old as mine, and it's gonna you just, you just need to replace it, uh, given all all the work that's here. So that about wraps this up. Um, again, I hope this helps somebody, and thanks for watching.